guys. So it's the start of another week. Um, and it's another week that we aren't in school together. So I wanted to continue on reading some of Breaking Stalin's Nose for you. Um, remember that this book is a Newberry Honor book. Um, and I want you to answer the question and tell me what is a Newberry Honor book? So you might have to do a little bit of research to figure out what a Newberry Honor Book is and why books would receive the Newberry Award. So answer that question, okay? Um, so when we left Sasha, and if you haven't uh, watched the previous readings, uh, Breaking Stalin's Nose, make sure that you uh, listen to those so that you can be caught up. All right, so when we left Sasha, uh, a car had just pulled up to the school and they said, and they were telling him, your dad's here. But when the person got out of the car, it wasn't his dad. It was the guy who arrested his dad. When the senior lieutenants and his guards entered the cafeteria, Survey, Sergei Ivanich yells, spontaneous applause, everybody. And he claps wildly until the teachers start clapping. Then the rest of us join in. And we all clap for a long time. I wonder if this is what the newspapers mean when they say a prolonged standing ovation. Does it count if we were already standing when they came in? Sergey Ivanich nods to Dubasov, our physical education teacher, kind of the equivalent of Mr. Morris. Dubasov dives behind the curtain and instantly returns with a wooden crate overflowing with loose sheets of paper. We all know what those are. Every class had to write a list of suspects who might have broken off Stalin's nose. Dubasov sets the crate before the senior lieutenant and salutes him like a soldier. Sergei Avanach waves him off, and Dubasov darts out of the way, embarrassed. The lieutenant doesn't even look at the box. We are still applauding when he unbuckles his holster, pulls out his pistol, and points at the ceiling. The cafeteria turns dead silent right away. Holy cow, so this guy just walked in here, and he pulled out a gun and points it at the ceiling? Yeah, I'd probably get pretty quiet, too. But remember, this is what they were kind of used to. All right. This isn't uh, a modern school. This took place back in like the 1940s. This is a historical fiction, of course, but this will have taken place in the 1940s, so about 80 years ago. He slips his pistol back into his holster. His eyes search the crowd, but his head doesn't move. I shift to where I think he won't see me, but I can't be sure. Those eyes look like they've seen through walls. Whoever chipped the nose off this statue will now raise his hand, he says quietly. But somehow, everyone can hear, even in the back. I know this is when I should come clean and raise my hand and confess right here in front of everybody. Forget about becoming a pioneer, Sasha Zaishik. Raise your hand. Raise your hand now. I know this is what I should do, but I hesitate, and somebody else's hand pops up to the left of the, sta of the stage. The crowd gasps and heaves back. <gasps> and there stands Four Eyes Finkelstein holding his hand up. The lieutenant frowns and he nods to the guards. They cut through the crowd and they lift Four Eyes under their arms and carry him to the exit. When they pass by where I'm standing, the crazy kid winks at me. Remember, his parents were arrested too. Oh, so he purposely did this, I think. Let's find out. We walk from the cafeteria in pairs, holding hands, talking is not allowed. I take the time to think about four eyes. We all saw the guards shoving him into the car. They did it the same way, doubling him over and pushing him in, as they had done to my dad last night. Now squeezed between the guards, four eyes is riding to Lubyanka prison, probably smiling his crazy smile at them. Why did he do it? Why did he take the blame for something he didn't do? I imagine the car stopping at Lubyanka's gates, the guard stepping up and looking inside. He studies Four Eyes and weighs the gate open. Is Four Eyes scared? He must be scared, wondering what will happen inside. Nothing will happen, of course. He's just a kid. Kid or not, they'll probably search him for concealed weapons. They won't find anything. What can they find? A snowball? Then they'll take his clothes away and give him prisoner's pajamas. Prisoners' pajamas always have stripes on them. They'll probably be too big for him. I doubt they have kids' sizes in there. Then the guards will lock him in a prison cell. Will he be alone, or will there be others in the cell? What if there are real criminals in there? What if there are enemies of the people, spies, and wreckers? What if my dad is in there, too? 
No, that's impossible. They don't lock a hero in a cell. But Finkelstein's dad could be there. His mom is probably in the women's quarters. His dad could be sitting in that cell all worried when the door opens and his son walks in. That'd be something to see. Because remember, Four Eyes' parents are in Lubyanka prison because they were considered enemies of the people. I stop walking. People bump into me and the ranks get confused. Keep in line, children, keep in line, calls Nina Petrovna. Someone punches me in the back and I fall in with everybody again. How stupid of me. I should have guessed it right away. Four Eyes took the blame so he would be taken to Lubyanka. What a clever guy. He figured out how to get inside. He did exactly what he wanted and I helped him. Well, not directly, but it doesn't matter now. Imagine how happy he'll be to see his dad and how happy his dad will be to see him. I wonder if they have prison cells for whole families. Tonight they could be together, talking away. And who knows, maybe his parents are not enemies of the people after all. Maybe they were arrested by mistake like my dad. Soon, Stalin will let them all go. And if not, Four Eyes is clever. He'll think of something. Nina Petrovna holds the classroom door open and we file in. She pats each passing head, counting. I smile at her. I can't help it. By the look on her face, I know the Pioneer's Rally is back on track. Soon, I will see my dad. Soon, I will become a Pioneer. And soon, everything will be good again. But just as I'm getting in, Vuva Sobakin jumps out from behind the door and slams me into the wall. <laughs> nice work, American Nets. His face is so close, his spit is all over me. Ew! His spit is all over Sasha! Poor Sasha! Let others take the blame. That's the pioneer spirit. Here we see Sobakin talking to Sasha. As the, as the proverb goes, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, says Nina Petrovna, looking out at us from behind her desk. We should have known better than to permit Finkelstein to remain in our ranks after his parents were arrested. We have failed, class, slackened in our vigilance, but this will not happen again. Nina Petrovna rises and walks to where the group photograph of our class hangs on the wall, and she blackens Four Eyes face with her ink pen. That's what we always do to the pictures of enemies of the people. And it usually feels good, but not this time. And there's a class picture in where they scribbled out Four Eyes' face. Wow, that's sad. Poor guy. But he did it so he could see his family. Four Eyes is not an enemy. He just wanted to see his parents. Satisfied now, Nina Petrovna turns away from the picture, and she says, Thanks to Fingelstein, we have very little time left to prepare for the Pioneer's Rally. But will this stop us from doing an excellent job? No, we yell. That's the pioneer spirit, children. Drums and bugles line up by the blackboard. Sashik, so bring the banner. We line up in a flash, eager for Nina Petrovna's next command. But for some reason, she's staring at the class photograph again. I look at it, too. The black ink glistens, still wet on Four Eyes' face. When Nina Petrovna turns around, she looks serious and determined. Children, she says, your teacher has a confession to make. Everyone gets really quiet. We've never heard a teacher confess to the students before. For some time, and contrary to my Stalinist principles, she said, I have been forced by my superior to keep silent. Here she looks up at the principal's office right above our classroom. Then she looks back at us significantly, making sure that we understand she's talking about our principal. But, in view of the vicious act of terrorism that happened at our school today, I refuse to be silenced any longer. Listen carefully, children. This is something I should have told you before. <sighs> she takes a deep breath and says, We have another individual in this class who is a child of the enemy of the people. My dad always tells me to breathe through my nose if I choke, if I choke on something. That way you won't suffocate. This is worse as ch than choking. I can't breathe at all. Not even through my nose. I glance at the door, judging the distance. If I run to it, she won't be able to stop me, but I don't run. Nina Petrovna says, Sasha Zyshik, and she points her finger at me. Then everybody cranes their neck to take a good look at the child of an enemy of the people. I squeeze my eyes shut. Suddenly, 
The weight of the banner I'm holding is unbearable, and in the next moment, it hits the floor. Pick up the banners, I sheik, Nina Petrovna says calmly. I open my eyes. Nina Petrovna is not even looking at me. It was all my imagination. She's facing the back of the class, her fingers aimed at Vuka instead. Sobakin, why don't you tell us what your father was accused of? Wrecking, wasn't it? People gasp, <gasps> and they turn to gape at Vuvka. Somebody whistles. When I finally look myself, Vuka is rising from his seat, slowly drilling into Nina Petrovna with the same scary eyes he turned on me in the boys' toilets. You should know, children, Sobakin's father was executed as an enemy of the people, says Nina Petrovna. Does it explain his hideous anti-Soviet behavior? and the likely fact that he was conspiring with Finkelstein? What do you think, children? Before anyone has time to answer, Vuvka flies at Nina Petrovna. He grips her by the throat and is strangling her. Nina Petrovna's face turns red and her eyes bulge. She makes gurgling noise and starts kicking her legs. Nina Petrovna and Vuvka knock things to the floor and bump into desk, and everybody jumps up. They are screaming. But most are laughing. I know the pioneers never get involved in fights, but before I know what I'm doing, I join in and try to separate them. Now there are three of us stumbling and grunting and bumping into the desks for what seems like a long time until somebody runs out to fetch Motvich and the others. Soon they are dragging Vuvka and me off to the principal's office with Nina Petrovna staggering behind and sobbing. Whoa, so this kid uh, got real mad and decided to strangle his teacher? What in the world? I just, I can't even imagine how Nina Petrovna's feeling. And I can't imagine how the other classmates are feeling. They just saw one of their classmates start strangling their teacher. Wow. That's a really abrupt end. I wonder what's going to happen next. Because they're headed to the principal's office now. Let's find out. Don't forget to answer the question. Um... What is a Newberry Award awarded for? So answer that question um, on the assignment and check back tomorrow for the next part of our story. Bye, guys.